Today I'm going to talk about Advanced TSE. It's a new version of FastBeam Echo or TurboSpin Echo that's available across all of the Philips platforms and we use it from day to day um, in routine clinical work. So when comparing Advanced TSC to normal TSC, there's a slight variation in how we do it. Instead of using a constant refocusing angle throughout the echo train, we use a variable flip angle. So instead of getting a normal T2 decay as a curve, we actually get a plateau of signal where the signal doesn't change so much throughout the echo train. You can use advanced TSE across all applications that we use TSE, especially to increase the sharpness across our images, almost like putting a camera in focus. It's especially good for using with our multi-vein or motion correction sequences as well. It actually widens the blade, so it improves the image quality of multi-vein really substantially. I think once uh, we've started using advanced TSE, particularly even with multi-vein, it's very hard to go back and we don't build anything without it these days. Once you understand how it works, the way it collects contrast is a little bit different. So you have the effect of TE and then the equivalent TE. So what you would do is um, once you set your effective TE to where your equivalent TE is set, you can actually use that for a longer echo train and other improvements in scan times. The benefits mainly using advanced TSE is the improvement in sharpness with the less point spread function error, you just noticeably see things as sharper compared to a normally optimized scan. You see it in PD and T2 to a varying degree, but you really see it uh, hugely in T1 compared to the other two. With single shot applications, this is where you can really put it up against normal TSE applications in the body and get much faster imaging outcomes, but very comparable data outcomes with the increased clarity of a sequence that normally has some inherent blurring to it. So the variable flip angle that's used in advanced TSE is using a lower flip angle than a standard refocusing angle. This reduces the SAR considerably. So when you have a patient, often that can be over 150 kilos, on a 3T scanner, this is going to normally increase scan times by up to over 50%. Um, by using advanced TSE, this brings the scan time virtually back to normal and being able to continue with exactly the same high image quality over a shorter amount of time, a better outcome for us and also a better outcome for the time that the patient's in the scanner. Advanced TSE is very easy to apply on your scanner. Once you go into the parameter setting, it actually comes up with three flip angles. We've pretty much through trial and error and some modelling worked out what we'd like to use. So for proton density in T2, we'd use flip angle sweep of 60, 90, 120. This is going to give you a higher equivalent echo versus effective echo range. So if you had an echo that you wanted to be equivalent of around 60, you'd probably look at about 90 to 100 milliseconds to get to the equivalent where you want to be. If you wanted to go to T1, we use a flip angle sweep of 40, 70, 100. This allows a last echo or shot length of around about 70 milliseconds. Now normally with a T1, you'd end up with about 30 to 40 milliseconds as a maximum before it gets too blurry. At 70 milliseconds, we're actually finding this is sharper than what we would normally have at 20 milliseconds the other way. Now if you're looking for a little bit of extra signal to noise, you can take the T1 up to 50, 80, 110, and then just reduce the shot level to around about 60 milliseconds. So you get the same effect, a little bit more signal to noise and a little bit longer time. So anytime you're modifying a sequence to make it advanced TSE instead of TSE, you've got other settings that are sitting there. And sometimes you might get a funny couple of uh, scan times which may arise. Now with advanced TSE, there's a few things you probably can change or don't really need on there as a result of some of the benefits from the sequence. One of those benefits is the fact you get blood, blood suppression. So when looking at things that the sequence doesn't really need, with inherent flow compensation already in the sequence, you can often turn off the gradient moment nulling that's your flow compensation that's in the sequence. This can often reduce the scan time considerably. I often also go into the gradient mode to see if we really need uh, different settings. And I do this with any Turbo Spin Echo building or, or putting it together, purely because depending on the efficiency of the sequence parameters that you need, I'll test these out whether they're advanced TSC or not. When implementing advanced TSE with T1, I find that the relative signal to noise and the scan time drops considerably because we're using a lower flip angle sweep than the other two flavors. The advantage of this is being able to increase the NSA to 2 NSA, which helps cycle out a lot of physiological artifacts that you find with 3T imaging in particular. This also results in a relatively shorter scan time, but the benefit of the sharper image outcome. The last parameter I always check with all of the sequences is the gradient uh, setting. 
Due to the efficiency of any parameters that you set, I always check the different settings to see which works more efficiently for the sequence. So if I wanted to summarise advanced TSC in a nutshell, we're basically taking out the curve in the T2 curve by using a variable flip angle. We're making the signal that we're collecting a lot more constant throughout. This increases the sharpness and clarity of the pictures, particularly in soft tissue. And the added benefits of this are lower SAR, improvement in workflow, and decreased physiological artifacts. If I wanted to look at the biggest benefit for the patient for advanced TSC, the biggest difference we've seen is when we apply it to uh, certain applications, especially with motion correction, we're seeing much improved resolution of finer detail that we've never been able to appreciate before. This is always going to enhance the diagnosis for the patients and make it diagnostic confidence for the radiologist so that their referrers and the patients get the best outcome possible. Um, some patients are relatively difficult and this can take out some of that difficulty, especially if they're uncomfortable in the scanner. If I was to look at my favourite version of using advanced TSC, I'd say it'd have to be single shot, purely because of the amount of difference it makes uh, and the surprise I got for how much better it made the image quality. Um, in general, it's really hard to not use it now. I'd, any single sequence that I'm building now, apart from axial cord imaging, I use it on literally everything. There is nothing I don't use it on. And even if it's only marginally better, because we optimise our sequences beforehand quite to a high degree.